In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how we do coverage planning inside of Echohel AI Pro. Now that we know the steps that we need to take to get to this point by importing a floor plan, scaling the floor plan, drawing the walls, the requirement areas, the exclusion areas, and assigning the right requirement area profile to our areas, we are now ready to start placing our simulated access points on our floor plan so we can see the heat maps from our access points. So let's take a look at how we do that inside of Echohel AI Pro. What you can see here is that we've got a floor plan and this is actually the Echohel Helsinki office floor plan. The guys and the girls over at the Echohel Helsinki office, they need to have great Wi-Fi. So together we are gonna do a design for the Helsinki office. What I have already done is I've imported the floor plan, I've accurately scaled it, I've drawn the walls, I've drawn the areas, and I've drawn the exclusion areas. So we're only focusing on the main part of the floor plan where you can see that there is furniture the area on the right is out of scope and the stairs and the lifts and the bathrooms, they're also out of scope. So we don't need to worry about designing for those areas. So how do we start placing access points on our floor plan? And to do that, what we need to do is come underneath the design workspace and I'm gonna select this icon here. If I hover over for one second, you see this is the simulated access point icon. So if I click on this, it's gonna give us an option to choose an access point and we can scale, um, sorry, not scale, search the access points here by scrolling down. And you can see here that we have got thousands and thousands and thousands of access points that we could choose from, as well as antennas, or we can search. So I wanted to use the Aruba AP635. I can search for it and select it. And now when I place the access point on the floor plan, I would see some signal strength. I would if I had chosen the visualization to not be in the empty visualization and I need to go to the signal strength visualization. And now we see the predictive coverage from coming from our simulated access point. And the frequency band that we're looking at right now is the 2.4 gigahertz, which is selected right here. If I wanna see the coverage for the five gigahertz, I would select five. If I wanna see the coverage for the six gigahertz, I select six. Now you may be wondering, what are these different colors? We've got green, strong signal by the access point, going to say yellowy orange signal and then gray. Well, what are the differences here? Well, green is very strong signal coming from the access point at around minus 30 dBm. Going to where the edge of the color that we see is minus 67 dBm. And then everything that we see in gray is going up to minus 85 dBm. So why do we have these kind of different colors for our visualization? And that is because we have set that we want our primary coverage from our access points to be uh, at minus 67 dBm because that is typically where the edge of the threshold would be to be able to have a good voice or video call over Wi-Fi. So then why do we care about the gray coverage area? I hear you asking. And well, that is because if we have more than one radio sharing the same channel and can hear each other at minus 85 dBm or greater, they have to share the channel and take it in turns to transmit their data over the air. It's, also, it's called part of playing the game in Wi-Fi. So that's good for us to understand what that threshold is as well. So I can see by placing just one access point on the floor plan, I'm not meeting my coverage requirements. So I need to place a couple of additional access points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one down here in the boardroom by simply left clicking. And I can see the coverage now over here and how about one up in this office? That's okay. And yeah, and there's still a bit of gray over here. So what I might do is put one more access point over here. And now I can see, yes, okay, my primary coverage on my six gigahertz is looking good. How about five gigahertz? Looks good. How about 2.4? It looks good. Okay. The thing is though, to have a high performing wireless network, we can't just rely on what's called primary coverage from our access points. We also need to have something that's called secondary coverage from our access point. So what's the next best signal from the next nearest access point? And the reason why we need secondary coverage is for roaming for our Wi-Fi client devices and also redundancy if an AP was to go down. So how do we see if we are meeting our secondary coverage requirements? Well, I need to change the visualization now from primary coverage, which is a signal strength, 
to the secondary signal strength view and I can see oh it's kind of gone red and orange in a few areas here and how about if I go to 5 gigahertz we can see that it's grey in a few areas and now on 6 gigahertz it's also grey. Now you may be wondering why on 2.4 is it red and orange and on 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz is it grey? And that is a great question. If we check our coverage requirements by going to project coverage requirements, I can see that there is no coverage requirement set for our secondary coverage requirement. So it's set to off. So it's just showing us the uh, coverage without this cutoff at NEG67. So we are only designing secondary coverage for five and six gigahertz in mind. So how do I fix my secondary coverage issues here? Well, I would simply just need to place some additional access points. So if I place another access point, let's say here, you can see that fixes the secondary coverage in this area, but we can still got a few issues on the rest of the floor plan. So what I'm gonna do now is if I place another access point, let's say here, that kind of fixes the coverage up there and we would need probably one more around here and that fixes our secondary coverage requirements. We've got a little bit of an issue over here as well. So perhaps we would wanna have one more AP around here and then that covers our secondary coverage requirements. So now we are happy that we've got primary and secondary coverage for our, two point, for our five gigahertz and our six gigahertz, but on 2.4, we're not designing for secondary coverage. Now there is actually another way we can do coverage planning inside of Echohow AI Pro. So I wanna show you that. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the select tool. I'm just gonna select all of these access points and I am going to delete them. And you might be thinking, oh no, what's gonna to happen to our beautiful design that we've just done? I'm gonna delete them, go back. And I'm going to, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna select the access point icon <clears throat> This time I'm going to change the visualization now to be looking at what's called the coverage planning tool. Now I've got that selected. Watch what happens now as I move my cursor across the floor plan. We can see live coverage from this access point before I place it on the floor plan. So I can see how far is this access point going to cover before I even place it on the floor plan. So I can start here by placing an access point here. And then I can see, you know, that covers that area nicely for my primary coverage. And if I wanted to, you know, continue on, I can just start simply making sure that I cover. Oh, that's not going to cover the office. I need to place it a bit further along up here. Maybe I want to place it just there. And I know if how about if I want to place an access point in one of these rooms, I can see how far it's going to cover again over here. And then finally placing that over there, I can now see the live coverage from the coverage planning tool. If I flip back now to the signal strength view, we can see the signal strength coming from these access points all combined. So that's just a few ways that we can do coverage planning inside of our awesome tool, Echohel AI Pro.